chance to send the Thunder home. Have you ever asked yourself what's going through an athlete's mind when they're asked to make the biggest play of their career? With a chance to hoist their team to victory? Or see their dream of a championship vanish with one mistake? Chance right here, and shot clock is off. LeBron James, as great as he is, as gifted as he is, was not born with a clutch gene. As much as pundits will use simple anecdotes to try and explain why certain players struggle in these high pressure moments, while others seem to ascend to new levels of greatness, the question we're really asking is, why do some players have the confidence to perform in these scenarios when the pressure is at its highest? What's going through their minds to make them believe they're good enough, no matter how big the moment feels? Self-confidence is at the cornerstone of great performance. And the misconception is that I need to have done something extraordinary to be confident. It's upside down. The way it works is that confidence only comes from one place and one place only. What you say to yourself. This is Dr. Michael Gervais, a psychologist who specializes in helping athletes achieve their best in these high pressure moments. He's worked with Olympic athletes to MVPs to this guy who free fell 24 miles from the edge of the stratosphere. Oh, he also won a Super Bowl as an advisor to the Seattle Seahawks. I wanted to ask Michael how the best athletes in the world train their minds to perform under pressure, and if the tools that helped Kobe beat the Celtics can work for you and me to achieve excellence in our own lives, no matter the pressure. There's only three things that we can train as humans. We can train our craft, whatever the technical skill is that you want to get better at. We can train our bodies. There's good science around that and we can train our mind. And so I have not met yet a world's best that is not deeply interested in maximizing all three of those. So how do we train our minds? It begins with awareness training. One of the first exercises Michael will do with a new player is to see how aware they are of their own internal monologue. That voice inside our head that tells you you're looking swole after a workout or that joke you told at Thanksgiving was probably a bad idea. Our mind is constantly making judgments about ourselves and our behavior. And unfortunately for us, our mind is already predisposed to focus on what's negative. Some psychologists believe this bias towards negative thinking may have helped our ancestors avoid danger while they were hunting and gathering. But today it means we've got a lot more time for negative self-talk that can eat away at our self-worth and our confidence, affecting our mood, emotion, and even the way we physically move. When you are in a negative state, if you will, a low confidence or a negative state, your body is trying to sort out, well, why am I so panicked? Well, if we're panicked, there must be a threat in the environment. If there's a threat in the environment because you're speaking to yourself a certain way, then I better brace for that danger. Our body tightens up just a little bit to prepare us, ourselves to fight or run away or freeze. And so when we tighten up just a little bit to have that coiled up physiological readiness to respond, we are now literally in a different body than when we practiced. A tough night for Simmons. Perhaps the most recent example of mental stress transforming a team's performance came in the 2018 NBA playoffs when the Houston Rockets, one of the most prolific three-point shooting teams in NBA history, had a chance to clinch a spot in the NBA Finals, only to go on and miss 27 three-point shots in a row and lose to the Golden State Warriors. A shooting slump so unlikely, analysts at 538 said the likelihood of this happening was one in 72,000. And so it literally is this snake eating its tail that happens inside of us where psychology and physiology and technical skills are all compromised when we interpret a moment to be too big. This video is sponsored by Morning Brew. If you're looking for a fast and easy way to stay on top of what's going on in the world, then I think you'll really enjoy Morning Brew. It's a daily newsletter that is delivered to your inbox that gets you up to speed on business, finance, and tech news. 
and it's actually enjoyable to read. Morning Brew does a great job of giving only the relevant information, so the stories are always interesting and easy to absorb. For the longest time, I would wake up and immediately check Twitter and start doom scrolling for the next 40 minutes. Now, I just check Morning Brew in the morning, read for five to 10 minutes, and I've got all the information that I would get from Twitter and even more. It's taught me about inflation and business acquisitions and even the Pokemon card renaissance that's happening right now. And the best part is that Morning Brew is entirely free and subscribing takes less than 15 seconds. So if you're looking for a better way to stay on top of what's going on in the worlds of business, finance, and tech, I'd highly recommend giving Morning Brew a try. So you can click the link down in the description and get it delivered to your inbox today. Now, back to the video. If you've ever rolled your eyes at the thought of telling yourself words of affirmation or reading the power of positive thinking, then I have some bad news for you. It turns out a lot of that seemingly corny advice might actually be onto something. And that is the fact that there is tremendous power in the way we talk to ourselves, with our inner dialogue becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. If we flood it with too much self-doubt and self-criticism, then we end up proving ourselves right. However, there is a catch. If you try to counter negative self-talk with forced positivity or generic self-praise, there's a reasonable chance your approach could backfire. In fact, a number of sociologists have begun pushing back against the kind of just be confident or think positive messaging that has become so popular in advertising and self-help communities. As the self-talk you're choosing has to in fact be true to who you actually are. I have a beautiful head of hair. I am just as strong as my older brother. Because as soon as you get you know, put in a situation where you've been talking a big game to yourself, but you don't have the goods to back it up, you know that you've been BSing yourself. So for example, if you say to yourself like, I'm built for this, or I got a great jumper, what gives you the right to say that? Let's use your imagination. Let's go back in time and describe to me the way you spoke to yourself when you were you know, kicking ass or doing great, or you know, when you were feeling like you were at your best. And so then we go back and just get a clear index. We almost do an inventory. And then from that place, we'll write them down. So you move it from the invisible uh, framework of your mind into something visible that you can see. And then, then from that point, we would develop a training program. And the training is to be able to speak to yourself in those ways, but those ways must be backed from credible experiences. According to Michael, the positive self-talk that actually transfers to confidence can only stem from honest self-reflection. Being honest with yourself, not as a tool for self-criticism, but to recognize moments when you feel like the best version of yourself. What were you doing at the time and how were you speaking to yourself? When you take stock of these and record those moments, you're giving yourself a tool to pull from when you need to feel self-confident. Positive self-talk that you know is true because you were there when it happened. It might sound convoluted, but it's actually quite simple. Awareness and then index you know, take an inventory of the way you speak to yourself that is credible. And then for each one of those credible statements, you write down what gives you the right to say it. And then from that place, you practice saying those things so they become familiar. What would you say to people who aren't competing for a Super Bowl? How does this advice carry over to the average person? The science and the art of knowing how to work with your internal dialogue ports beautifully into anywhere that you take your mind. And the joke here is that we take our mind everywhere we go. So the idea that we develop this awareness of our thought patterns and then optimize those thoughts, then you go into any environment and you're like, listen, I've put in my work. I speak to myself this way because I've, I've busted my ass in like putting my nose into a book, figuring it out. So confidence is what gives you the right to say your truth that you have earned the right to say, I've done the work to say this and my voice matters. What I love about Michael's approach to confidence is that it's one that works from the inside out. While so much advice around confidence is focused on finding ways to appear confident through things like posture, body language, or wearing red to show you're dominant or something. True confidence comes simply from a place of knowing yourself and valuing who you are regardless of how other people see you. And what happens for most people is that they are managing looking good rather than being truthful. 
And so at some point in our life, we must face the truth. Are you really just trying to look good and have favor and be liked and be accepted, discounting your sense of belonging to their approval of you? Or are you on a purpose-driven, mission-driven approach in life where you are really trying to add to something special? And to do that, you have to bring your whole self to it. You can't half it. You can't fake it. The extraordinary is too big. It's too difficult. It's too beautiful. It's too amazing for you to only bring half of yourself into it. And if you're managing approval from others, you're not bringing your full self in. And so at some point we must face that fundamental question. Am I approaching success in life or am I avoiding failure? I want to say a big thank you to Michael for taking the time to sit down and talk with us for this video. If you want to hear more from Michael, he's got a really great podcast called Finding Mastery, or you can check him out on Instagram at Michael Gervais. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see y'all in the next one. Cheers.